things. Um, I need someone to uh, start reading off the first letter of every sentence that Achilles Tortoise, Achilles Tortoise says. Sorry, sorry. Um, so I think it's H O, right? So we go. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, so go Achilles Tortoise, Achilles Tortoise. Oh, sorry. Uh, H O All right, one second. S C O N. S C O R A. S C O, sorry, S C O. S C O R. S C O. S C O N T R. N T R. A. I think I have too many S's here. A. C. R. S T I. There's an O S T I P. U N C A C R S T I C A L L Y B A C Y A R Anybody see this? So, and I should have you know, asked it as a homework assignment, but one of the things that the turtle and uh, tortoise and Achilles says um, is, you know, it, starting page of 81, he says, you know, there are many, many clever ways of hiding things in music, Achilles says, or in poems. Poems used to do very similar things, you know though it's rather out of style these days. For instance, L Lewis Carroll often hid words and names in the first letters or characters of the successive lines and poems he wrote. Poems which conceal messages that way are called acrostics. So we already had kind of a frame and outer message screaming out saying, I'm talking about me, sillies. Decode me. Um, and it's already from the dialogue, which had its one level of meaning, it then, within itself, pointed upwards to a higher level of meaning, which is this acrostic we just pulled out. But what does the acrostic tell us to do? Sure. And, and what does that get us? Sorry, the acrostic Lee. There shouldn't be a space here, so join that over there. Let's see. Um, well, if we then look at this as another acrostic, and we take the first letters of each word, what do we get? And then the third, and I think probably the highest level of meaning we can extract out of this, is J.S. Bach. So to what extent does Contra Costa Punctus mean J.S. Bach, right? Um, and there's, I think, a lot of really neat, neat stuff going on when he kind of asks about messages which can talk about themselves and also build themselves, right? And that's basically what we did here, is we had a dialogue which gave us instructions on how to extract meaning from this. And then it in turn gave us another message which told us how to extract meaning from it. 
And in some ways, it's a really inefficient things to, thing to do because what was, I don't know, it was like a 10-page dialogue. Um, that much was needed in order to extract the inner message, or one of the inner messages here, being JS Bach. So that's kind of a poor compression ratio here. Um, you know, it took 10 pages to tell us one name. Um, but I think it's interesting nonetheless. Um, but still, not everybody picked this up. So to what extent does this dialogue mean J.S. Bach? Well, I would argue not to a large extent, right? Um, and fundamentally what I'm going to argue here, and this kind of goes with the, go with the Latif hypothesis or conjecture, is that um, meaning is not inherent. And to expand on this, and this is what, what Hofstadter calls the jukebox theory of meaning. Uh, meaning is the relationship of things. But what does that mean? What I'm trying to argue here is that Apple, if, if we wrote Apple on a piece of paper and we shot it out into outer space and maybe some alien civilization came upon it, um, that there, there's not really much inherent meaning in having a few ink blotches on a piece of paper or in here I have some you know, limestone broken onto a piece of rock. Right? To what extent does limestone broken onto a piece of rock mean anything? Right? And the only reason we say apple has meaning is because there's, com there's this complex isomorphism between the visual input of apple when you read it to the electrical activity in your brain. Right? Just like... And, you know, I don't actually know any Chinese here, but um, <laughs> I can try to construct a character. And to what extent does that mean something? And, you know, I could have someone sitting in here and say, well, no, that's actually the Chinese symbol for tranquility, right? But how was I ever supposed to know that? How, 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 are, how was I supposed to discern this from nonsense? Um, and really, this, this shows that Meaning doesn't lie here or, or here, but it relies it lies here and the relationship of things. So the extent to which this means anything is the extent to which it has a direct correlation in the minds of the people using the terms. It's just like when you have these native languages and they die out. They no longer carry meaning or really they continue to exist in any way, shape, or form, is that you don't have people actively using and kind of interplaying in this complex feedback process of modifying what these things mean. Because also think about how, the, how these symbols, how these marks on this limestone have changed in meaning. If we were to rewind a half, a hundred years ago, I would, lap, Apple would definitely not mean laptop, right? And, you know, some, I don't know if the, the myth involving Newton and his discovery of gravity, um, which is a myth, by the way, um, existed 100 years ago, but let's suppose it did, but let's re rewind 500 years ago, um, then this would absolutely have no connection with, with Apple. And, you know, we would have this, this would be the supported neural network of, of what this string meant. So, fundamentally I'm arguing here that this only means as much as the stuff it causes here. But this brings kind of a reverse question. I mean, 